In this video, we're going to talk about the first two tabs in the drawing window of the WinBid Pro V15 software from GDS. And you'll notice all these tabs at the bottom of the drawing window here, and uh, or the main screen, I guess. And each one has a very specific use. And the first is uh, the Layout tab. So now this is where everything starts when you create a new elevation. And um, let's go ahead and do that. So. If you remember from some of our other videos, uh, to create a new elevation, there's a few different ways to go. We can go to the elevation uh, little tool right here and hit new elevation. Or we can go and skip to the next elevation. Or we can even go to the elevations window and hit add new. So if you're already on your drawings and you're in the middle of a job or you've already created an elevation, it's easy as the easiest thing is just hit next elevation. So you always give your elevation a name. Um, I'll just make it brief. And it's going to use the previous framing system. So uh, in other words, the, the framing system from the elevation that preceded this one. So if, and remember, if you made changes to that elevation through the edit ele frame sys button, you change that specific elevation's framing system by editing parts or changing settings, and we go ahead and create a new elevation, it's gonna pick up whatever changes you made in that previous one. So use that to your advantage or know what it's going to do if you don't want it to do that. So it could vary the way you enter your elevations or, um, or not, but uh, if you're aware of that, I think you can take advantage of it. So. Now we can also change a framing system here if this needs to be a different one uh, for this particular um, elevation, or we can pick it automatically picks up that one. So let's see. So now is where you need to decide how many of this particular elevation are there. It defaults to one, but if there's 10 elevations just like this, you would put 10. Uh, this is where the number of panels is a key. So let's say there's seven panels. And this is something we can manipulate later on by adding splits or um, unequal panels, things like that. But you can always go back and edit the number of panels, but this is a, the start of your elevation. So the frame width, you can enter this in inches, feet, fractions, decimals. So if it's 15 feet, I'll put the foot mark, uh, 2.5 inches, I don't need to put the inch mark after that. And it's just going to change it to inches um, after we tab to the next uh, to the next field. So the height I can just go ahead and put in um, straight inches. Oops, straight inches in that one. So now it's going to draw our basic layout of the frame. So this is where um, we would continue on to other tabs, or there's these other options here. So uh, one of them is editing the framing system. So I mentioned before, if you made changes and you create another another elevation, those changes are going to get picked up. So if I hit that button, this is essentially the same window that you see when you're looking at the default framing systems, only this particular uh, configuration here is just for this one elevation. So you can edit profiles, you can edit part numbers for the different components, change all kinds of things. So there's videos on the framing systems that you can watch to get into more detail on all the different components here. But um, that's one way to get to that. There's also a, a button for that L of frame sys on the menu tree underneath elevations. So keep that in mind. Now edit add center lines. If you are working with center line dimensions, this is a fairly new feature and there's a tip button here. So we open this window and we hit tip. Uh, and this is just a message. So we're, it's based on vertical numbers. So remember that vertical numbers um, are starting with zero at the left jam and working your way over. So zero, one, two, three. And let's say I want the center line at vertical, uh, this one, number two, to be at a certain position. So right now, we'd have to figure our daylights plus the um, profile of the frame, et cetera, et cetera, to figure out where that uh, vertical falls. But if you're working off a set of plans and that center line is, say, 60 inches, 
from the left uh, wall, basically. That's what I'm telling this um, center line of the second vertical to be. So here it shows what I've done. Uh, so vertical number two is 60 inches from the left wall. So it's real simple. You can do that with multiple verticals. And just remember your overall frame width is defined here. And it's going to round it because it's still trying to divide it up by a sixteenth of an inch uh, with the daylight openings and the profile of the verticals and jams figured in. So if things don't don't divide out to a sixteenth of an inch, if we divide all this out, then it's going to have to round it down. So it's always going to round it down, which means your cock joints are going to be a little bigger on the sides. But um, it's working with a sixteenth of an inch. There is a thirty-second setting in the um, in the drawing settings, so keep that in mind. But those numbers are a lot more difficult for people to to work from when cutting and and uh, looking at uh, you know cut sizes and everything else in the program. So keep that in mind. And the Make 3D is just a new little uh, feature that we've thrown in. So you can see how um, it kind of does like a, a laid down 3D little frame there. And uh, we can rotate it by clicking that and then kind of dragging it around like this with your mouse. So it's just something interesting. This would actually print if you were to print your uh, drawing right now. You could print this kind of thing. Um, it's more uh, just to show you something different than anything. <laughs> But you can show you can do that, and like it said, you can hit escape to get out of that mode, and then we can uncheck that to get back to our uh, regular two dimensional drawing. So it's not very scientific or exact, it's just kind of 3D ish looking. So it's based on a profile depth that defaults if there's not one set in the framing system. So you could always set like a six or five inch um, depth to your uh, frame. But um, otherwise, it's going to make up a number like four or five, I think. So that's what that is. Um, view detail bubbles. Now, if you're in a catalog that has details um, configured, then you should actually uh, see some bubbles in there if if they've been configured. So there's some some small bubbles. Let's go in and zoom in a little bit. So it looks like the jam is a bubble 20, verticals are 21. So these things have been configured in the uh, in the framing system. So if we go back here, we can go back to stock lengths, and here's where the bubble labels are. So horizontal would be an 11, um, left wall jam 20, and head would be 10. So those are the bubbles. This this particular catalog does have the details for um, this framing system, so so that's why the bubbles show up there. Now they're kind of small, so in drawing settings you can actually get in and manipulate the size of the bubbles on the drawing. So uh, watch our video on the drawing settings and shop drawing stuff for for learning how to tweak that. So I can uncheck that, um, and of course there's a little tips button that shows you little hotkeys that you can use to get through the program. Believe it or not, the enter key can actually be used to skip between fields here. So you can use either tab or enter, and you can click on the individual fields as well. So now let's jump to tab number two. So that's your basic layout tab. Tab number two is the splice tab. So let's say you have a very tall opening, and let's let's add our change our frame height here. So greater than a sock length. So let's say it's 350 inches. And we hit tab. It's obviously going to draw it a lot bigger now. Um, now you'll notice there's splices here. If I click and zoom in, scroll with my scroll wheel on the mouse, it's going to zoom in and I can see the splice right there. So it's by default, the program is going to splice it by the stock length of whatever these members are. So it's probably a 288 inch stock length. Now, if I want to manipulate the splices, so I can change it from being 288 to, say, 200, that's going to be the first splice. So then I can tab down, I can hit redraw, and now you'll notice, a little hard to tell because the 
the, big, the bigger the screen you have, the better for this type of thing. If you have a 27-inch monitor, you can see this stuff a lot better because your drawing window is a lot bigger. Um, but our splices actually move down a lot, so they move down to 200 inches. Um, now, for that matter, I should be able to, let's zero this out, and I should be able to go back, even with our other height that we had, say 124, we go back to that, a little more uh, readable. I should be able to put a splice at like 100 inches, because really all it's doing is telling it there's a new place to cut the verticals. And I do have to hit redraw. So now you can see the splices real clearly here. So I've got splices at 100 inches, and whatever remaining. So if you if you go to the optimizer, optimize this and look at your cut sizes, you'll see that the, the cut size, it's gonna be a little shorter than 100 because it's sitting on top of sill flashing. I can see that by scrolling in. And I could also see it if I edited the uh, elevation framing system, I could see the parts. Another way to tell you got sill flashing is you can see a dimension over here of it on the right hand side. So I can click 100%, go back to the whole drawing, if I don't want that splice joint anymore, I can hit zero. Um, one more thing about splices. If we go to the framing system, there is actually uh, hardware per splice at the jam and at the vertical. So you can specify what hardware you need at those splice points. Now it's gonna be one type of hardware for every splice point, so keep that in mind. Um, and that was a message that says we might need to redraw after changing framing settings. So that's why there's multiple splice points we can add. We can specify specific splice points, but they're all going to use the same hardware. So keep that part in mind. Um, and watch our videos for the remaining uh, tabs in the drawing window and all the other things that uh, you're interested in learning more about. Thanks a lot.